Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you're joining us from in the world. Um, I'm joined today, uh, well, my name is Ben Spector, Head of Solutions at Momentum. I'm joined today by the wonderful Michelle Bornstein, CEO, author, and certified dream manager. Um, Michelle and I actually bumped into each other at Datacon in Miami a couple of weeks ago with no idea who the other was, started talking about um, how it would be great to do a webinar between between us, uh, between us, Zementum and her, um, and then it transpired that one had already been organized and I was going to be hosting it, so uh, an entertaining little, little chain of events. Um, anyway, today we're going to be um, having a look at um, how business sort of the, the human processes within businesses map together with um with technical tools to sort of drive drive businesses forwards um a few kind of small stats businesses that adopt the right technology typically see an 82 percent increase in profits and the results can be even more profound for msps so hopefully you're all delivering uh delivering on that promise to your clients um, cutting edge tools are changing the game, making your work easier and more efficient, but it's not just about tech. It's also about that sort of human empowerment. So we're going to learn how these tools can supercharge your MSP business. Um, Michelle and I are going to show you how to identify, implement, and utilize technology in your MSP business for exponential growth. Um, and with that, I'd like to introduce Michelle. Michelle, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you, Ben. Thank you for having me. And it was great running into you and yes, very fortuitous that we already had a, a session planned unbeknownst to you. So I'm excited that I get to share a little time with everyone here and as a certified dream manager and champion growth coach, my mission is to help leaders grow personally to thrive professionally, which I believe ultimately drives the company's success. So the information activities that we will learn today are based on 20 plus years of consulting in the technology industry and then stem from my own personal growth journey as a leader that I began years ago. Um, and in so, terms of just a yep. very quick bit of housekeeping, um, Q&A is open. If anyone's got any questions along the way, please do feel to drop them in there. Alternatively, chat. Anyone can chat with anyone. So uh, if there's anything you want to drop in that's perhaps a bit less question, just a bit more statement or comment, feel free to dump it in the chat. Everyone will be able to see it. Um, yeah, looking forward to it. The session's probably going to run for about 40 minutes from here, aiming to finish at, um, at quarter two. Um, yeah, look, looking forward to it. Thanks, Michelle. Awesome. Yes, and, and my goals for today are to introduce you to the tools that I believe are designed to help you connect, collaborate, and innovate with your team. We're going to begin with a coaching check-in, explore the overall mission, and then discuss tools that we need to drive our personal, our professional success, sorry, and then learn about tools for our personal growth. So this session is designed to be interactive, which allows us to learn and grow with each other. And throughout the session, I will invite you to join in by actively participating using the chat. I know that that's not a typical webinar experience, but I believe that um, today, if you are open to it and you wanna share thoughts and ideas, we would all love to learn and grow together. So let's do a coaching check-in. This isn't something that you have to share with the group, but I just wanted to get everybody in the right mindset of the work that we're going to be doing today. And so I invite you to jot down your answers to these three questions and get ready to learn. So first question, what did I have to give up to spend the next 45 minutes in this session? What am I willing to do to make this time worth my while? And then finally, how do I believe I will be better from this session? Okay, so let's do this. Uh, over For over 20 years, I have seen organizations struggle to achieve their growth goals. And I would hear things like, our system isn't configured properly. We're not able to make good decisions. My team needs to be more efficient. They don't have the right processes. And as I consulted with my clients, my primary goal was to optimize their systems and processes. And I believed that if everything was perfect, if everything was configured properly and everyone knew how to do their job, they would achieve the goals that they were looking for as an organization. But over time, I realized that the people within the organization played as much of a role in the success of an optimization engagement 
as the proper configurations and right systems and training. So this came up when I saw how people communicated with each other, if they trusted each other to do the work that we were learning together, and then how they resolved conflicts. And it was critical that each person needed to understand how they fit into the process as well as the value that they brought to the, to the process overall. So I found it's not in our nature to work on ourselves as humans and find the tools that help us connect and collaborate and innovate. And it's easier to say the system is broken, but in reality, it might be the humans that need help as well. So my mission today is to provide you with strategies to unlock your organization's success by sharing tools that will empower you to grow personally, to thrive professionally. So as we get started, our, our primary world in the technology space is the professional tools, and we spend a lot of time focusing on them to make sure that we can achieve our goals. And we do utilize powerful systems and applications like Zomentum, which has amazing features to streamline processes, boost productivity and automate um, efficiencies. And most of us use some sort of PSA, maybe it's Autotask or ConnectWise, which is, is going to centralize information and allow us to have the, the tools that we need to run our businesses at our fingertips. We also work on processes which drive our business workflows. We spend lots of hours and energy configuring those processes trying to automate our workflows so that we can be effective. And that, that definitely drives our professional success. And then I believe most importantly, um, the analytics component, being able to utilize the reporting and management metrics and anything that's going to help us gain insights into what we need in order to grow our business. That could be financial trends, revenue um, projections, metrics, KPIs. Those are all critical tools that we need to be able to grow our technology organizations. And when we allow our team members to leverage these tools, focus on the right pro uh, processes, be able to get the right reporting, our businesses do grow and it, it drives our success. And I think what's so, really interesting there on the kind of the systems, the processes, the analytics, I think there's quite an interesting sequential journey there. You know, you need the systems in place to help drive the processes. You need the processes and crucially, you need to follow the processes to be able to drive the analytics. Like if I look back at my my own MSP a few years ago, you know, we we had the systems in place. We were using Autotask. We weren't using Zementum at the time. It didn't really exist uh, around the time I was selling my MSP. Um, we were kind of starting to really bake in some really solid processes um i've always been a massive fan of automation i do a lot of work around things like Zomentum and hubspot and autotask and, and driving serious workflow automation but a lot of that i didn't do within my msp a lot of that's come you know as i've had more time to be creative around these things without the stress of clients shouting at me day in day out um but the bit that we really fell down on was that last piece, the analytics. And you wouldn't have the analytics without the processes, and you can't really do the processes without the systems. Um, and again, I get I have a lot more time now to be creative and helping MSPs to kind of understand that they're collecting all of this data, you know, the utilization rates based on the time entries on tickets and, and things like that. But how do you actually correlate that to making intelligent business decisions? I think that's where it's really interesting, that sort of sequential process you need to go through system, then processes to finally get to analytics. Absolutely. So I would be curious in a poll, which I am going to launch right now on, oh, Ben, you I've just have launched, to... I've, one step ahead, I've yes. just launched it. <laughs> so in just a quick poll, I'm curious out of the group that's with us today, do you feel like you have the right systems, processes, and analytics to drive your professional success? And that's a scale of one to five, with five being the highest. So we've got some good results sure, there. The muted. So five was the highest, wasn't it? So we've got mm -hmm. a few people sitting around the middle. But so actually, everyone thinks they're quite strong. Um, perhaps if I just end that now and share the results with everybody. So we've got 40% saying 
giving themselves a sort of score of three, sitting somewhere in the middle, 40% a score of four, and a very bold 20%, one in five, who reckon they've absolutely mm -hmm. nailed everything. Nice. So I love those results, and that's encouraging to me in the work that I've done consulting with technology companies. Um, the systems are driving that productivity, building confidence in the work we deliver, processes are increasing our effectiveness, increasing the value we bring. And then, of course, the analytics, as Ben was mentioning, they propel the learning, which drives results for individuals, teams, and our overall company. So as you consider your response to the poll, um, keep in mind that working through this is an ever-changing and ever-evolving process. Our systems are always changing. Processes are modified. And then, of course, the analytics are driven from that. So I'm going to say keep focusing on that because it will transform your business. So now we're going to do a little bit of a different type of tool set, which is focused on personal growth, which is the human component to what we have in our businesses today. And it's, it's important that we focus on this piece of the puzzle because it's really the people that are using the tools and the systems and the processes that we put into our organization. So I know in my own experience as going from a consultant, you know, independent consultant where I, I was just working within an organization to trying to keep up with everything that my clients were needing from me, I was very overwhelmed. And the firm that I worked for suggested, hey, you might need a team. So let's pull together a group of people that can help you. What I didn't know was that stepping into that leadership position after operating as an independent person doing all of the things, um, it was really hard. And I needed some tools because I was failing as a leader and I was really struggling to connect, motivate, and grow my team. So what I want to share with you today are the tools that I believe drive the human part of our business and ultimately your success. So um, when I created my team, like I said, I realized I had a lot to learn. The, the group needed me to be a good leader and I needed to figure out how to do that. And the tools that I'm pulling through here are the ones that I started with that I found were invaluable for that process. So the first set I really focused on being curious in my communications being able to ask good questions versus tell people what to do, that definitely helped. And I had to learn how to do that. Another tool set was focused on fostering connections and driving motivation and empowering people to connect, build that relationship, and then work together as a team. And then I think the most critical was empowering innovation, which allowed people to feel confident in themselves take risks and try new ideas. So they weren't just hanging back waiting for me to pave the way. We were working in an innovative way, in a collaborative way to move the, the company's vision forward. So the tools I'm gonna to share with you today might be a little bit different than what you've experienced, but the first one is dreams. And as part of my certification as a dream manager, I'm very passionate about this concept. And I first learned about it by reading a book called The Dream Manager by Matthew Kelly. And he shares that dreams bring us to life, dreams animate us, and what dreams do for individuals, they also do for relationships and companies. When I read his book about eight years ago, I thought, this is crazy. Um, why would I share my dreams with people I work with? What are even my dreams? That was my big one. I didn't even know if I had any more dreams. And being vulnerable and being um, aware and consciously thinking about my dreams in a professional setting was very foreign. But I decided to give it a try, introduced it to my team. We dreamed together through a dreamstorming session. And almost instantly, I saw new connections start to form between the team, even though many of them had been working with each other for years. And the, the conversations grew into something that was bigger than just a project or a status update. They actually became a very bonded and strong team that trusted each other 100%. So through this process, I believe that dreams give you power to achieve goals that you did not think were possible, feel fulfilled and accomplished. And then most importantly, you're able to help other people achieve their dreams. 
when you share your dreams. So the second part of dreaming is sharing. So if you dream and you keep them to yourself, it's very hard to get traction on them. But when you're open and you share them, you will create trust between people and build strong teams. You'll increase employee retention and engagement, and you will create a dysfunction-free team. So I believe in this tool so much that I, that was the first thing I did when I started my coaching practice was get certified as a dream manager, because I just think we need to start dreaming together in order to achieve big, big things. So I've, I was just need to point say, I've yeah. always personally found that second section very difficult, the sharing your dreams. Um, mm-hmm. You know, when in my MSP, I always knew what the business goal was and what we were trying to achieve and what growth we were trying to achieve. And, all, you know, I knew all the KPIs and the metrics and, and I was measuring it for success, but I was really failing to communicate that to the team. And it's a very common theme you know, when I'm perhaps mentoring other MSP owners now, you know, these MSP owners are typically very clear on what they're trying to achieve, but that communication of those dreams um, is inherently lacking in most of the businesses I've spoken mm-hmm. to. Um, actually, one of the first things where we engaged with a marketing agency several years ago, and one of the things they identified was a lack of alignment within the team. It was more looking at the messaging and the way we communicate with customers. But they said to even fix communication and, and the messaging externally, you guys need to fix the messaging internally. Um, and so we spent about a year trying to realign everyone on on that kind of that same message, that same journey internally, so that the conversations externally were were well aligned. Absolutely. And and this process that we're going to go through together, this dream storming will invite people to dream a little bit, but then I'm going to ask some questions which allow us to start to share. And I would love to hear those dreams in the chat so that we can start to, share and practice that process of sharing. So this dream storming is, is gonna be a mini session. There are actually 12 categories that Matthew Kelly has discovered, but due to our time, we're going to shrink that down to three. And what you're going to see is the actual category and then just a few sample questions that help you start thinking about what fits there. Um, I think the biggest takeaway is you don't have to worry about how you're going to achieve this dream. You're just going to be opening it up and saying, this is something that goes on my list. Right now is not the time to figure out how to make it happen. So our first question is, our first category is professional. What does professional success look like, feel like? What kind of leader do you want to be? Write down just a few things that pop into your mind and then we'll do the next one. Okay, so the next section, next category is creative. If you could teach anything, what would it be? If you could write a book, what would it be about? If you're creating something, what does it look like? Who would it help? Anything in the creative category. And actually, if you don't mind, I'd like to call out one of those in particular that I think is the most interesting under the professional. What kind of leader do you want to be? I'd, I'd love to hear in the chat if, if people are willing to share you know, what kind of leader do you want to be? You know, for me, the the big leader spot is just one that is compassionate and caring and welcoming um, getting people to engage and be committed to something bigger than ourselves. I think that that is a strong leader dream for myself. What are the options here? Because like I've done, I think, DISC profile um, four or five years ago. As, as you know, That's sort of one angle to leadership. But in your mind, if, if you had to distill to a short list of the t- t- these kinds of leader, you know, what options do people have to choose from? What, what I find fascinating and what I do through my empowered growth coaching is I actually ask them to think of leaders or people that they've been inspired by and what were the traits and the qualities that that particular person had, whether they were a leader or not. 
And ultimately, I work with people to create and identify and define the type of leader that inspires them. And what I find fascinating is that not one single person has been, has answered that question the same. So every leader that I work with has their own vision of what an amazing leader looks like. And even in the same organization, they're very, very different. And everyone's bringing that that skill set or that um, set of character traits to the table, which I think strengthens an organization. Yeah. So the last dream category we're going to dream in today is what virtues or character, sorry, is the category. And it would be what virtues do you admire in others? Or what character trait would you like to develop more deeply in your life? And as you're writing down these dreams, as Ben had said earlier, we are going to, I am going to ask you to share. So I know out of the group, this is a, this is a tricky thing to do, but I am going to prompt you with a question and I would love to hear in the chat what is coming to mind for you. So the first question is, what is a dream that you're most excited about that you came up with today? If you pop it into the chat, I'll share it. And if you um, are nervous about sharing it, I would say don't be. We have a very quiet audience today. I, I hope they're in deep reflection. Right, Anne Ordner has said creative, learning how to bake with the goal of opening a bakery one day. I think you might be in slightly the wrong business here. Like <laughs> what I can tell you is if you sell your MSP, you will be a million times happier. So maybe the bakery, oh, side business. Maybe the bake, yeah, I mean, the baking does sound, uh, does sound nice. Okay, I love it. So then I would challenge you to select from your dream list, which one is most important to you and why. Ben, what's a dream that you have that's most important to you and why? Gosh, do you know, I, it's a, that's a really interesting question. With, without diving too deep, I think one of the, 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 perhaps a bit vulnerable, but one of the challenges I think I have at the moment is a bit of a lack of, a lack of dream I, I feel very much in wake up get the day done go to bed mode at the moment I've got you know so many projects on and so much going on that I don't I don't feel like I've taken the time to step away and think about what what is the big picture and quite often people ask you know what, what's what's next um and I honestly don't know you know what, what's next is to wake up tomorrow have a good day and go to bed again <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I do need to spend some more time thinking about you know what what it what is next what is the big dream just to be happy I guess sounds so basic but just to be content I think that's an amazing dream um Jeremy I says feel like everyone he's curious have that. Oh, I you're dreaming for everyone that's good um <laughs> curious Jeremy how much says financial info to share with the tech team it gets very personal oh that's a good one yeah, because I'm typically... a strong believer in sharing a lot because it yeah. helps to align everyone on that same vision, same goal. But I don't know if that's the the official correct best practice answer. But if you think about public companies, they are effectively sharing everything. So once you get to a certain stage, you have to share the deepest, darkest financials. There are no secrets. So in a way, I guess you could start aiming for that transparency much much earlier on. And I like. I like encouraging people to share the information that the team can impact. So um, like if they can drive the sales side, if they can be more profitable on projects, if there's something that they have a, a role in or a way to impact it, then absolutely share it. But if it's something like your you know, personal expenditures on how much you pay in rent, it's not something that they necessarily can change unless they're all agreeing to move to a different space. So anything that the individual team can change the outcomes of financially, I think those are good places to start if you're not sure how much you want to share. So the last dream category section is um, 
which dream is most difficult to achieve and why? And I saw that Anne answered being the type of leader who is not afraid to be the one to step up and take risk, being a role model for those around her. I think that's an awesome, important dream. Um, I think for me, a most difficult dream to achieve was starting my own business after 20 years of working with a team, deciding to go independent and go after my dream of being able to create champion leaders was scary. And um, definitely not not making me feel uh, that safety net was there. So I needed to create a space for that. And I think that that was a really hard one. So I love that everyone um, opened their minds to this process of dreaming. And now I'm going to challenge you to think about mindsets as our next tool tip. And I believe as a leader, this is, this is the um, most critical way to be successful is knowing what, uh, what mindset we're operating from and how to switch it. So as a, a little quick mini exercise, I'm going to challenge everyone to close their eyes for just a minute and listen to a set of questions, thinking about and recognizing how they make you feel. So the first set of questions is, what's wrong with me? Whose fault is it? And why bother? The second set of questions that I'm going to ask you, again, paying attention to how it sounds, how it makes you feel as you hear them. What do I value about myself? What can I learn? What's useful? And what's possible? So these questions come from a author, Marilee Adams, who wrote Change Your Questions, Change Your Life. And the first set of questions would be termed or defined as judger. The second set would be learner. And the trick and what she teaches is that you have the choice to move from judger to learner. It is up to you. You're in control of that. And if we can operate from a learner mindset more often than judger, we will be able to achieve great things. What's most important to note is that all of us have judger and Often we're judger more towards ourselves than those around us. But when we let judger make those decisions and thoughts for us, it's very, very hard for us to grow as an individual and then as an, as an organization. So she has a visual um, chart or map, if you will, that you can download if you go to her Inquiry Institute site. Um, she has a little assessment to see which mindset you operate from the most. But I like this visual because it just gives you that ability to see you're in control of where you are on this map. And then if you decide, I don't want to be in judger, I don't want to be stuck, I want to make progress, being able to switch by asking yourself a good question is the trick. So for me, my switching question is always, what's the opportunity here? What can I learn? Even if I don't want to be in a space or I don't want to be doing something, I try to use that mindset if I catch myself being negative because it opens up possibilities for me that I didn't think were possible before I started that process. So as you're thinking about your own team and how they operate, maybe yourself and how they operate, it's critical that with awareness, we have the capacity to choose at any moment which questions will frame our thinking listening, speaking, and relating. And the trick is to, to recognize when you're operating from judger to be able to switch to learner. So as a takeaway and for, for thoughts after our session, just take a moment to consider which mindset do you operate in a majority of your day? And then if you're standing in judger quite often, what would be impacted in your life if you were able to switch and you were able to practice the art of switching into a learning or a learner mindset. Our last tool tip that I actually believe is the most important is our ability to coach. And we, we spend time interacting with people all the time, but coaching is very different. And the practice that I follow is 
inspired by and created by Michael Bungay Stanier, who wrote The Coaching Habit. And his whole concept of coaching is just creating a space to simply be with each other. When we do that, we're able to unlock possibilities. So he says that when you build a coaching habit, you can more easily break out of three vicious circles that plague our workplace, which is creating over-dependence, getting overwhelmed, and becoming disconnected. So his model and the model that I follow with my clients is to keep it simple, keep it to 10 minutes or less, make it daily, and then listen generously. And I think the important pieces of this is coaching is really just a simple conversation. It should be recurring. It could be longer than 10 minutes. It can be shorter. Um, but the key here is to make it recurring. And I follow lots of um, leaders and coaches who say daily is critical if you're building a team. Um, I have clients that do things from daily all the way to twice a month. I encourage no less than twice, no more than tw um, twice a month. Like they need to have that consistent repetitive exposure to their team. So just making it consistent and the people that they're working with know that they have that opportunity to talk, to be heard is critical. And then the, the last piece of this is the listening component. So often we think of coaches as those that need to give advice or solve problems or bring me something and we'll, we'll work together to solve it. But really coaching is just time to be able to reflect, to share information, to, to talk openly and be, and be outward instead of just inward thinking. And then the key is that the person that you're coaching with knows you're hearing them, that you're listening to them, and then they are able to make the next best step for themselves. So for today, I just wanted to give you a simple coaching conversation or template to start with. And this process over time evolves and the questions can change, that's perfectly fine. But if you wanted to start coaching today with your team, it could be very simply asking someone what's on your mind. So you're opening the door for a conversation to happen. And then note that they're most likely not gonna tell you what's on their mind, the first response. So asking them, well, what else? What else are you thinking about? Gives them the opportunity to add to that conversation. So. The key is to get them thinking about really what's going on, what are, what are they carrying with them, what are they excited about, what's causing them pain, what are they stumbling over, any of those things um, open the door to be able to have a good coaching conversation, and then asking them what's most challenging or what do you want to focus on, because often as leaders, we might hear someone say this, this is what, I, what I'm thinking about, but really it's not super challenging for them and they know what to do there, but it's the other thing that they said secondary to the, to the statement of whatever was first out of their mouth, that's really what's challenging them. So you wanna give them an opportunity to find in that conversation what they really wanna work on. And then you're listening. Can so you're I, not giving advice, you're not solving. Mm -hmm. So if someone raises something complicated during this very intentionally short 10 minute session what should you do with that thing because obviously you're not going to have time to solve it you know assuming you've organized these back-to-back -back little chats in the morning what do you do so if you know if you really did tighten your schedule and you have them just boom 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 then what you would do is ask them to take as an action step a little bit of time to think more about what they're concerned with or what they're thinking about. And then if they could come back to you later that day or you go find them later that day and follow up. I like to leave breaks though between my coaching sessions because it gives that person the feeling that you have the time for them if they need it. So it doesn't have to be this like get in, get out kind of like speed dating situation. Um, because you want to give people time with you because that's really the space that you're creating is that time to be with someone else. So don't, don't compress them all into a short, short window, but just note making it be a consistent present time where they have that time dedicated will be important to building that relationship. And then I think the most 
important part of the coaching and the part that goes into accountability and commitment and results is the action steps. So asking them out of the conversation, what are they taking away? What was most valuable is important for them, for the learning to happen, for the action to happen so that you know, yes, they have something that they're taking away and that they want to continue um, doing after the conversation is over. And um, when you give people this chance to have this connection with you, you'll see that they're working in a different way with you. They're motivated, they're connected, they're committed, and then most likely they'll be accountable to whatever action step they selected for themselves. So the other question I get asked about coaching is sometimes people don't bring challenges and issues. Sometimes they just wanna talk about their dreams or their vision or just what's going on in their life. That's perfectly fine too. Don't just narrow it to what's the challenge because often as you work with someone on a recurring basis, they'll come and they'll say, I don't really have any issues. I don't have any challenges. So you wanna keep that conversation and that door open. So be open to sharing um, vision, success, dreams, um, asking them questions about that as well. So I know I did a lot of talking about tools and these are all things that maybe are new to you or you've heard some uh, a little bit over time. And um, I wanted to, to make sure that we recap or close this with what are some things that you can do now to take action and I'm going to encourage you first to start listing, so writing down your dreams and then sharing them. And an easy way to start sharing your dreams is to ask others, what are they dreaming about? So Ben, if I came to you and said, hey, what are you dreaming about? What's something you're dreaming of? You'll be like, I don't know, more free time. And then I'm able to then say, oh, I'm, I'm in that space too. It would be great if I could do this. So it just starts to elicit a different kind of conversation with people. Um, the next thing would be switching from judger to learner. So practicing that art of asking yourself a good question that gets you thinking about how to get to a learner state versus stuck in the mud of the judger state. And then the last one is to create a coaching culture. So giving that time and that space for people to innovate and come up with ideas and solve their problems and remove their roadblocks. Those are important times that happen during coaching and coaching doesn't have to be leader to, to team member. It can be peer to peer. Um, and you can even go the other way where someone's coaching you. So they're coaching up and they're helping you generate new ideas and come up with things that are innovative and solve problems. So don't limit yourself on what coaching looks like and who can do it. So I do have a quick poll. And um, I, I'm just curious out of all that we've gone through today, what would be something that you might want to incorporate into your, your environment and your culture as we wrap up our session? I'm quite excited to be able to see what others think of this because having listened to you talking through this, to me, it's really clear which one I'm going straight away and doing. And so <laughs> far, no one, so far, no one agrees with me. Go on, there's a few more folks. Um, who haven't responded if everyone can go on we're not we're not moving on until everyone's done it so crack on come on a few more to come i don't think i don't think i don't think i'm gonna get to 100 percent. that's annoying they're they're nervous come on that means they it's have to totally commit. anonymous no one can see <laughs> you've got three choices it's one click dreams mindset or coaching come on <laughs> I, don't, I think they've gone to make coffee or something. They've missed the most important bit. Um, anyway, okay. So, we'll end that then. So, so Ben, so, I'm curious which one you're which picking. One? I was going with coaching. Like it's, mm. to me, that seems like such an easy, tangible, helpful thing to have. It, maybe it's not going to be daily, but at least twice a week to have a 10 minute in the morning with each of my team members. Yes. What's on your mind? I love that. But weirdly, nobody else agrees with me. Um, 50% 50 of you have said dreams and 50% of you have said mindset. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I don't know how to feel about that. Either way, I'm doing it. Okay, it's um, perfect. It's well, tangible. so I love that you're doing it. And then I'll be curious to see, I usually see within three sessions 
a completely different experience with people. One that you you might have been working with these people for years, but in, within three to, three meetings, you can completely change the way that you guys interact with each other. So I'll be curious to see the transformation that happens when you incorporate coaching into your environment. Oh, thank you. I should keep you posted. Mm -hmm. So I really appreciate everyone joining me and spending time with us today. Ben, you are great. And um, I would love to do more of these. If anyone would like to connect, please do. Uh, email, phone, or LinkedIn is perfect. And I look forward to hearing from you and hearing about your dreams. Thank you very much, Michelle. Um, I guess if, if anyone here isn't a Zementum customer, um, Michelle's been very kind in, in donating her time to help us with uh, some coaching content. If you're curious to know what Zementum's all about, um, we've got sales CRM to help drive pipeline, as Michelle alluded to earlier, um, incorporates document builders, so sort of quotes, um, contracts, proposals, integrates with all of your distributors and PSA and really drives process. Um, sales automation, again, we talked a bit about automation and process, license reconciliation to help uh, ensure that your PSA is always up to date with what your vendors are billing you. Uh, and lastly, newest product is a payments platform to help um, speed up the quote to cash process, but also reduce costs and overheads relating to uh, recurring invoice payments. Um, so on that note, uh, bang on time because I now need to hot foot it to the station to get to a tech tribe dinner with uh, with the inimitable Australian Nigel Moore. Um, thank you so much for joining us today, Michelle. It's been really interesting. You won't normally get me this excited and, and bouncing on a webinar. So um, that was awesome. really good. Uh, if anyone's awesome. got any follow up questions for either of us, feel free to reach out. Um, otherwise, we look forward to seeing you again in the near future. Thank you. Thanks very much. Bye. Bye. Bye.